Okay, good morning and welcome back everyone to our Options Education webinar series. My name is Tony Zhang, I'm the Chief Strategist here at Options Play. And today we're here to unpack a little bit about what's happened over the past week. Uh, a lot has happened, markets have sold off significantly but have bounced back. So today we're gonna discuss what we saw last week and how we anticipate markets are going to continue moving forward. Now, before I get started, just a quick disclaimer. What we're going to discuss here today is purely for demonstration purposes. It is not a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell any specific securities. So what has transpired since last week we were here? We've had a significant sell-off on Thursday, Friday, Monday. Markets have continued moving higher now. And this really comes down to what we've been talking about for quite some time now, which is really just the Fed, Federal Reserve buying and they've continued that over the past couple of days. They've continued that rhetoric. They are now starting to buy on the primary market so that they are supporting consumer loans for small companies, mid-sized companies. And this is really what's driving the markets high. So Fed continuing to buy means that we are going to continue to buy the dip. That is our base case for the current markets. Now, there have been a lot of investors asking us over the past couple of days, past couple of weeks regarding valuations, whether we felt that markets were overvalued, whether we felt that markets were overbought. And the answer is absolutely. There's on almost every single way that you look at these markets, with the exception of maybe a couple of them, which are important. Markets certainly seem to be overvalued by our traditional values of evaluation. Um, especially even on momentum indicators. We were seeing plenty of overbought or exhaust signs of exhaustion. Markets did resolve that over the past week, but that doesn't mean that markets can't continue moving higher. And we have some research to show that we believe markets are going to continue moving higher. And that's exactly what we're here to talk about. Now today, markets are going to focus a lot on retail sales. We do have retail sales numbers that, that's gonna be coming out today, trade ideas uh, that we're gonna go over. And then at the end, if we have a few minutes, we'll do some Q&A. So let's go ahead and get started here. The primary <clears throat> question that I want to help answer and help you understand from today's session is really where are markets headed next? What is the next upside target for this particular market? So let's go ahead and look at some of those things. My name is Tony Zhang. I'm the chief strategist here at Options Play. Now, for those of you that have joined us for the past few weeks, you know that I've been talking a lot about the, the fact that markets are overbought, but that what we're looks our base case at the moment is still predominantly going to be buying on dips. And today and this week, we had that prime opportunity. For those of you that joined us last week, we talked about how the markets were starting to reach that overbought condition. The S&P 500 reached above 70 on the SP, on the RSI indicator. Well, I was expecting pull back here towards to the 20 day moving average. We got exactly that. It did overshoot a little bit to the downside. I think for some investors on Friday morning when we opened up around 297, there was some concerns that this was the start of a, of a larger correction, especially as we saw some of the headlines that was driving this uh, movement to the downside. But for those of you that have joined us for the past few weeks, you'll remember that I've been talking about the fact that the, the market rally that we're currently seeing for the most part is fairly healthy. We've seen participation across the broad sectors, large cap, small cap, equal weight, market cap, <clears throat> all have joined the rally. And we've seen some, some healthy sector rotation. So our base case was to buy the dip, that if you were able to deploy that strategy on Thursday, Friday, even yesterday, uh, this is the strategy that we believe is the best strategy. And looks like today we're about to open up about another seven points higher on SPY. So this was an, a very similar buy the dip uh, scenario as we saw back here in mid-May, uh, we're basically getting another one of these. And since then, we've had a nice resumption higher. And that's exactly our question now is where do we move next on the SPY? Now, just from if you look at the daily chart here, and I'll, I'll zoom in right here to make this a little clear. Here's the daily chart. Some, some primary targets that we have here first to the upside is to fill that gap. That gap is around at 318 now. Since we're opening of about 314, I expect that we will probably fill 318 fairly quickly, probably even this week. We do have that all-time relative high around 323. Those are your two primary targets to the upside 
this particular week. Now, the question is whether or not we can break above higher and continue to retest that 339 resistance back that we that we put at, put in in February 19th. So those are our primary targets to the upside. Now, what one of the things that we can do is we can look at something like the NASDAQ 100 index when we look at the Qs. What's quite interesting about the Qs here, very similar price action, but the Qs have managed to break back above its all-time highs that it form back on February 19th. So it's now above that level. So the next level here on the QQQ is around 247, uh, 248, which was the all-time high back here just a few days ago. Um, and we're seeing, is, we're seeing if we can break back above that level and continue moving higher. So technology clearly on the front runner right now, again, as far as sectors go, technology has been a front runner for a very long time, starting back here in, in November and led the markets higher. It did provide some uh, protection to the downside and now leading the markets higher again, really providing what we would consider a V-shaped recovery. So one specific sector, technology, providing that V-shaped recovery, some other sectors lagging, and those are some of the things we're going to look at here today. Now, what is... I would say surprising that this a surprising fact that we've seen over the past few weeks is the fact that small caps have kept up with this rally, actually um, leading this rally. Small caps leading this particular rally here uh, looks like it's about to open up significantly higher again. So I expect small caps to retest that 160 level to the upside. It already it does have a few small targets here to the upside, filling that gap getting back to its new relative high and then reaching up to that 160 level. So small caps has some targets here to the upside, about 20 bucks to the upside in terms of targets, fairly small risk to the downside if it does turn around because if it breaks below this 133 low, that certainly would put us in a much more bearish view here for small caps. So you're risking roughly about six bucks to the downside with about 20 bucks to the upside on a risk reward perspective, looking pretty good here for small caps. Now, VIX did break out above that 20 day moving average. This is something that we've been talking about for quite a few weeks, how every single time it touches the 20 day moving average, it bounces lower. VIX broke out above that level, but it has compressed significantly over the past few trading sessions. So we do expect that this will continue to compress lower here as volatility some starts to come down. Now, this is an important thing to keep an eye out on because with volatility in the current state of, you know, VIX trading around 33, which is triple where we were trading back here in February, whoops, uh, 33, which is triple where we were trading back here in February in the teens. This does mean that volatility is still fairly elevated. That means that strategies with selling volatility, so credit spreads, cover calls, cash secured puts, these are strategies that are great for the current market condition that we currently are in. So as you're thinking about option strategies, selling strategies at the moment still provide a high amount of premium versus buying options, especially when you're thinking about how much upside is there left in this particular market. Uh, we, while we think that there's going to be upside, we do think that that upside may not come as quickly. So buying options when they're very expensive right now may not be the best strategy, predominantly selling strategies. That's the strategy that we would prefer here in this current market environment. Now, crude a little bit of a, a stumble here this week, but has continued to find support here around that $36 20-day um, moving average. So this might put a, a, a stop to the decline in XLE or the energy names. But at this point, you know, right now it's stuck between this $40 level and this $36 level. And the question is really, which way does it break out, higher or lower? Um, it's yet to be seen, but this is really one thing that we're keeping our eye on for any of the energy names that you might be playing. So I want to take a look at retail sales because this is the, you know, these are some of the economic numbers that are coming out. I will say retail sales is predominantly one of the biggest drivers of the rally we've seen in the markets as markets have been fairly optimistic of consumer spending, uh, especially as they shift from physical stores to online. One of the things that we do want to point out is that apparel is one of the strong uh, strongest categories of consumer spending, department stores and, and air travel starting to pick up a little, uh, certainly not as strong as, as the other sectors. But one of the things is that movie theaters and transportation still is flat on the, on the day. 
So if, for those of you that followed me on CNBC this weekend uh, or, or on Friday, I talked about using Lyft because I think people need transportation, but people are not comfortable on public transport. And as you can see, the, uh, the numbers here have seen almost no growth in terms of public transport spending, but people need to get around. So that's why my thesis is that stocks like Lyft are going to be a net beneficiary from people wanting to be mobilized, people want to get around, but not wanting to take um, public transport. Uh, one of the other sectors that I want to pay attention to, and, and we'll come back to apparel. I have some names to take a look at here with apparel and the, and the increase in spending here. But one of the things that I want to point out is clearly dining is starting to pick up here. But the one thing I wanted to point out is just really how volatile uh, the dining uh, numbers seem to be. So be very careful in these particular names as you're thinking about restaurant stocks and you're thinking to yourself, well, maybe travel doesn't pick up as strongly, but restaurant stocks may certainly uh, pick up strongly. So just be careful with this. These numbers are fairly volatile. It seems like it's very sensitive. And it took a big, uh, big dip yet last week as a result of the fact that, you know, we've seen this new resurgence in terms of cases of COVID-19. I think people are going to be somewhat jittery. So be very careful when you're tiptoeing into some of these restaurant stocks as we've seen that data to be fairly volatile. So Going back to the question about being overvalued, a lot of questions about, you know, how can we continue to take long positions uh, or how do we continue to, to be comfortable buying the dip when we see that stocks are so overvalued? And this is an interesting, I would say, indicator to look at, which is the Bank of America Global Fund, Fund Manager Survey. They basically... Uh, they basically um, survey uh, professional money managers to ask them, you know, how, what percentage of them feel that the equity markets are overvalued or undervalued. And it basically is an indicator that stays uh, either above 50 or below 50. And you can see ever since basically 2013 or so, uh, fund managers have believed that the markets are overvalued. And, you know, this is one of the things that I think is driving a lot of sentiment here right now in terms of whether people feel that markets are overvalued or undervalued. But I will say that if you look at the markets right now, uh, you know, does it really matter whether the markets are overvalued or undervalued? I would argue that it really doesn't. Um, and that the fact that markets are overvalued does not mean that the markets are going to correct lower. This is, a, this is a concern that I think many investors have, and it's a valid concern. And I think this uh, survey validates your concerns that it's not just you, it's the whole market that feels that the, um, that the, that the markets are overvalued, even professional money managers, almost 80% of them feel. And as you can see, that's an all time high going back to 1998 since they've been doing this survey. So, however, one of the things to, to remember is that uh, markets can continue to be overvalued or overbought for a long time. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. Some of the research I want to show you is after a 10% gain that we saw back here in May, um, what happens after the markets, um, after a 10% monthly gain? As you can see, average, out, average that out over the next month, it's usually just roughly, just, just smallly, small positive. But over three, six, and, and 12 months, it is hugely positive. And, you know, as you can see, 72% of the time, 80% of the time, markets are positive over three, six, and 12 months. So this continues to give us the confidence as to why we believe markets can continue to move higher. doesn't mean that it will, but statistically speaking, you have a much higher probability of markets moving higher than lower, especially during an election year. Heading into an election year is usually a very powerful uh, tailwind, if you will, for markets. So with that, let's take a look at some of the ideas that we're taking a look at. First of all, one thing that I want to point out is a potential breakout that we're currently seeing that we see here in investment grade bonds. This is heavily tied to the fact that uh, the Fed has been buying these investment grade bonds. They've been buying the ETFs. They're going to start buying directly on the primary markets. This is providing what we call uh, the, the Fed put or an artificial support for these types of names. Now, LQD is just at that 134 resistance level, that all-time high that it put in back in February. We are looking for a breakout here above 130, uh, 134. This is a relatively higher yielding name as far as an ETF goes, and they're all investment grade, and we expect that this name is going to continue moving higher, especially as equity markets continue to move higher. 
<clears throat> the one thing that why, that I will say is that the higher this this ETF moves, the lower the yields on your investment grade bonds are. And the, the the caveat here is that the higher that the Fed pushes these names higher, and the lower the yields on these names go, the more attractive equities actually looks. Because when yields on investment grade and treasuries get pushed lower guess what? The only place to really seek any significant yield is in the equity markets. S&P 500 trading at about 2% in terms of dividend yield, or a little more than 2%, is still triple the, the uh, yield of a, uh, of a government bond, a 10-year government bond. So you are go you're going to see investors seeking yield actually move into equities rather than investment grade or, or even high yield grade because the yields there are just being compressed lower and lower as a result of Fed buying. So this is really, you know, a lot of some of the questions that people have regarding how does Fed buying, you know, impact the equity markets if they're not buying equities. They're not necessarily impacting equities directly, but by compressing yields in all and all the other fixed income products, that naturally moves money towards equities because that's the only place to seek any yield anymore. So let's take a look at some of the names that uh, that we're paying attention to. So one, one name that I want to point us to, and it's a name that's hard to ignore, and I know many of you are trading this, is really Tesla. Tesla broke out above that 950 level, just broke about above 1,000, came right back down to reality, but bounced back above that 950 level here, and I think Tesla is now finally primed for a breakout above 1,000. So that's a name that we're going to pay attention to here today. Certainly, it is going to get a lot of headlines as Tesla breaks back above 1,000 and maybe stays above thousand so certainly one name that we're going to pay attention to and it's likely going to be in the media for the foreseeable next week or a few uh, or two as tesla breaks above a thousand um apple apple is definitely one that we're paying attention to because we had that significant breakout here that went a little too far too fast just like the overall market it's coming back to retest this as support uh, I'm not sure why my mouse is not working. There we go. Uh, so Apple broke out above that three, let's just call it 330 level, is now has come back to retest that 330 level as support and is starting to bounce higher. So I think that is the consolidation, if you will, that we needed to see in this particular name bled off some of that momentum that it needed in order for it to continue moving higher. Markets again opening up significantly higher here, so we expect uh, names like Apple, especially the mega cap names, to really be supported by this continuation higher. Uh, Lululemon, this is on the apparel side. Uh, you know, I will say the strength of this stock has surprised me. Uh, you know, I had taken some short positions here in, in Lululemon in the early days here, down here, and it completely blew that out of the water here. And it has continued to move higher. This stock has really come back to life here. Predominantly, I would say, as a result of of people working out at home instead of going out to gyms and they're buying these types of athletic wear in order to do so. We had a pretty nice check back to the 20 day moving average. And that is the opportunity that I see for a potential long here in names like Lululemon or even some of the, um, you know, another big name in the apparel name in the apparel space is Nike, but the Nike stock does not look nearly as strong as Lululemon. If you're looking for momentum stocks to play to the upside in the apparel space, I think Lululemon is better positioned here than particularly Nike. Retail sales, Amazon, another interesting name here. Amazon has really hasn't seen the same type of gains as some of the other stocks, but did go parabolic here last week above that 2,500 level, came back to retest that and is now starting to move higher. So I do think Amazon is potentially moving back up to that $2,700 level, uh, reaching that all-time high, and then potentially moving higher off of that. So I think Amazon here is projected out to roughly close to 3,000 here um, if we do manage to break above 2,700 here for Amazon. But especially if you think about retail, especially if you think about the fact that we've seen this uptick in terms of COVID-19 trends, I think shopping on Amazon is going to continue. Uh, I certainly don't think that's going to slow down, especially as cases of coronavirus continue to see a, a slight uptick, especially in certain places of the country. Um, Goldman Sachs, interesting 
I would say strength out of Goldman Sachs. Goldman has underperformed the banking space for a long time. We have really have consistently thought of JPM as the best of breed within the major banks, but Goldman Sachs have really come back to life over the past, uh, you know, as a result of post coronavirus, you know, they've invested a lot heavily in the retail space. So a little different business model than JPM now, which predominantly has been a very large commercial, um, investment bank as well as trading Goldman, you know, predominantly in the investment space and trading, but you know, has recently diversified into retail and perhaps some of that paying off and certainly investors uh, seemingly like the stock a little bit more than JPM. The chart looks fairly strong here. Now, I will say that what I don't particularly really like about financials is the fact that yields are still very low. And with low yields, these banks are going to struggle with, with making revenue. So, uh, you know, Goldman Sachs or financials in general is certainly one that I'm interested in, but I will say that my upside on this isn't particularly strong. So again, my preference here is to sell credit spreads, uh, sell a put credit spread. So even if Goldman Sachs just moves a little bit higher or grinds its way higher up to that 220 level, you don't need a big move to the upside in order to break even on a stock like this. If you're buying call options on Goldman Sachs, you're going to need a big move to the upside in order for you to break even. Because again, implied volatility and premiums are expensive right now. You want to make sure you account for that when you're thinking about your options strategies. So all of these names that I've just talked about here, buying call options are not necessarily going to be cheap, even though they are trading near all-time highs. You want to be cognizant of that as you're thinking about bullish or bearish opportunities, which, what type of option strategy go, goes along with that. So selling option strategies at this point, still our preferred strategy. Brazil, Brazil, clearly one of the countries that have been uh, still devastated by COVID-19. Their trends are still on the uptick, but it looks like equity markets are starting to tell us perhaps something uh, that the COVID-19 numbers are just starting to see, which is perhaps a bit of a turnaround here. Um, we've seen the a bit of a breakout here on EWZ, which is the Brazil ETF, broke out above $26 a few a few weeks ago, came back all the way down to that 20-day moving average, and is start, now starting to potentially move higher here. So perhaps Brazil starting to turn a corner here, and equity markets are telling us something as far as this breakout here. So keep, keep, keep an, an, an eye out here for Brazil. Now, silver has been on our radar for quite a few weeks, ever since it broke out above that $15 level. And we were talking about this breakout here around 15 as a surge in industrial demand for silver came to life a few weeks ago because we started to see industrial activity pick up. So silver rallied significantly off of that. Now it spent the last couple of weeks really consolidating here between 15 and 17 or so. So bounce off the lower end of that range. I think that you'll likely see silver resume back up to that 17 level. It's to see as to whether or not it'll break back above 17 because 17, 17 and a half is a major resistance level here on the weekly chart. So if we can manage to get back to 17 and a half, perhaps break out, then you can see a potentially significant move to the upside here on silver. But again, not quite sure that we're going to break out above 17 and a half just yet, but those are our upside targets in the short run here it is a move back up to that $17 level, especially as we've seen industrial demand pick up, manufacturing pick up. So this is the type of uh, metal that's required for those types of, of, of industries. So those are the ideas that we currently see in the current markets. Those are the ones that we are actively keeping our eye on. But again, I think the very important thing to remember here is that to play for, you know, the Fed is continuing to buy. This is the opportunity that we have seen for the past few weeks. We've been looking for this this dip that we that we were that we were seeking uh, when we were talking last Tuesday. We got that dip. Hopefully, you were able to purchase some on on that dip. Now the question is, where do we go next? Now, I will say the market sell off on Thursday, Friday, and Monday certainly took a lot of the momentum and optimism out of the markets. I, I, looks like markets are roaring back to life here up about 3% pre-market. Um, so seems like markets are back, uh, you know, back on its feet, but it's hard to say right now, you know, we still need to get to that 318, 323 level on SPY. It might pause there. So be careful as far as buying calls 
for upside, you might be better off selling puts, especially as premiums still remain fairly elevated. VIX at 32 provides you with a lot of premium if you're selling, whether you're selling puts, selling put spreads. And that means that even if the stock market doesn't move roaring back, right, maybe over the past next couple of trading sessions, this momentum starts to fizzle out a little, you're still able to be profitable on a trade if you were selling options rather than outright buying. So those are the strategies that we're paying attention to. That's how we're setting up this current market for this particular week. I hope that you guys find this useful in terms of helping you start your trading day and make sure that you know where to focus your attention on. So right now I have a couple of minutes to try to answer any questions. If you have any questions, feel free to type them into the Q&A window or the, or the, or the, um, or the uh, chat window and I'll try to answer any questions over the next couple of minutes here. Um, so Bob is asking, are there any companies that you like in the Brazil market? Bob, so I'm, I will say I don't follow the Brazil market separately. I've only looked at the ETF and I've noticed that you've seen a small uptick here in the ETF. Come back to retest that as support. So I don't, um, so my view here is that perhaps Brazil is turning their corner, but I don't have any specific um, uh, names. Uh, how do we get the volatility spreadsheet? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by the volatility spreadsheet. Um, if you don't mind, uh, I'm happy to answer that question. Uh, oil direction, please. I think I've discussed this a little. Oil's kind of stuck right now between 40 and 36 and a half or 34 and a half rather, that 20 day moving average and 40. I'm really looking for a breakout either above 40 or below this level for a direction. Right now, oil's pretty in a very neutral direction here. Um, does it make sense to short VXX? Uh, I'll be honest, I don't trade VXX. I don't know anything about VXX to be perfectly honest, but it looks like it's a, um, a VIX ETN. Um, you know, I, I, my preference is I never trade VIX because VIX is a, is a number off of the SPY. So if, if SPY goes up 10%, I have no idea whether VIX is going to go down by 5%, 10%, 20%. That's why I don't like shorting VXX because just because I think S&P is going higher doesn't tell me how far VXX is going to go. Um, let's see. What do you think about pharmaceuticals? So, you know, I really like IBB as an index here, uh, which is the biotech index. My preference is to play the indices rather than individual names. You know, IBB, very nice uh, move off of that 127 and a half support level here. I think that you might get a resumption back up to that 135 level, which goes back from a, from a weekly chart perspective all the way back to 2015 or so, looking for a breakout above 133. That is the breakout that I'm looking for here from pharmaceuticals. Um, I think there was a question about how do I define momentum? Hold on. Um, oh, could you please define momentum? Momentum is really just, uh, I use an RSI indicator here to define my momentum. It's, it's an it's a indicator that many of you can use on your charts for relative strength index. It is a fairly common indicator for most charting packages. And it's a good way to measure momentum. When you see large moves in the RSI, that's telling you there's a strong momentum move in one direction. And I usually use the nine period moving average on top of that to let me know how far momentum is deviated from the average, okay? So with that, I wanna thank everyone for taking the time out here this afternoon, this morning. Again, I hope that you really find this useful in helping you set up your day and find some trade ideas for your trading day. Um, and I will be back here soon to help you with some more education and I'll be back here next Tuesday as well. So thank you so much. I hope you guys have a great day.